The Amazon River carries so much water that it continues flowing for up to 150 kilometers inside of the Atlantic Ocean. So much so that sailors can drink fresh water before they even see the coast. The Amazon River is so huge that it carries 20% of all the fresh water that rivers discharge into oceans anywhere in the world. But why is the Amazon River so huge? And what about the Amazon rainforest? Why is it so lush, so big? These are some of the questions that we're going to answer today. Hi, I'm Tomas Puello and welcome to my channel where we go deep in unraveling how the world works today to navigate the world of tomorrow. The Amazon River is so huge that its mouth is more than 250 kilometers wide. That's about the same distance as Paris to Brussels or New York to Boston. It's so huge that it doesn't have bridges that cross it. In some places, it's a bit narrower, like only five kilometers narrow, but that's on the dry season. In the wet season, it can go up to 10 meters higher and up to 50 kilometers wide, making it completely impossible to cross. It's so huge that people can surf the waves that are formed in the river. But why is it so huge? It's because it gathers all the water from this region in South America. And that region is so big that it's about the same size as the contiguous 48 states in the United States. But why does it catch all the water from all this area? That's because it's like an Earth-sized funnel. It's in the equator, and around the equator it's very, very warm, and so water evaporates. But also around the equator, winds go from the east to west, which means that all the water that evaporates from the Atlantic is pushed into the Amazon rainforest. And then the and these mountains stop all this water. The air goes up, it's colder up there, and so water condenses and rains down. And all this water then flows into the Amazon River. Also, it has a couple of mountain ranges in the north and the south that stop the water from flowing in these directions and concentrate it into the Amazon River. All of this is pretty recent. The Earth is four and a half billion years old. But the Andes were only created around 10 million years ago. Before that, the Amazon used to flow in the other direction, into the Pacific. And today we can still see this because that's the tip of the Pacific coast in South America, now used by the river Guayaquil. Indeed, rivers are not as stable as we want to think. For example, if you look at the Amazon River watershed and the Orinoco watershed, they're actually connected by the Cassiquiare Canal. And depending on the season, water flows from the Orinoco Valley into the Amazon Valley or in the other direction. So if you think about it, this part of America is in fact an island. Back to the Amazon. It's so warm there that the trees transpire and there's a lot of water that goes from there and evaporates into the sky. So much so that only half of the rain in the Amazon rainforest comes from the Atlantic and the rest of the rain is water that was evaporated by the trees themselves. This forms what we call an atmospheric river, a river of water that goes through the sky from the Atlantic and towards the Andes. But the Amazon doesn't only flow at the surface level and in the air. It also flows under the earth. There's something called the Hansa River that flows kilometers below the surface towards the ocean. With all this rain falling on the ground, what happens is that the soil leaches. The water grabs all the nutrients from the soil and brings it with it down the Amazon River and into the ocean, which is why the mouth of the Amazon and its plumes are so full of life. Unfortunately, it means that the ground of the Amazon loses nutrients. And if that happens for millions and millions of years, plants cannot grow anymore. So why is the Amazon rainforest so lush? Because of the Sahara Desert. We talked about the winds that are going from east to west and what happens is that they grab sand and 
dust from the Sahara. They carry them over the Atlantic and some of it falls in the Atlantic, which is why there's so much life around the equator in the Atlantic. But part of the dust, about half of it, reaches the Amazon rainforest. And there it feeds back all the nutrients that the Amazon rainforest needs. In fact, half of the dust that falls in the Amazon rainforest every year comes from the Sahara and makes up for all the loss of one of the key nutrients, phosphorus. Okay, I cannot stop myself, so here are a couple more facts. But before I do this, if you made it to this level of the video, it means that you really enjoyed it. So like the video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next videos I'm going to post on this topic. Can Brazil become a superpower? How bad is the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest? And if you really don't want to miss anything, subscribe to my newsletter at tomaspueyo.com because all this content I send to your uh, inbox every week. Okay, last two bonus facts. With all this heat and humidity and nutrients coming from the Sahara, the Amazon rainforest is extremely dense and it's so dense that you can actually see it from space. Also, with all this humidity and heat and nutrients and plants, humans haven't been able to make it into the heart of the Amazon rainforest. And as a result, the Amazon rainforest has the highest density of biodiversity in the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in more, click on this video. See you.